All right, so at this point, I would actually be considered finished. And I actually want to export this out of here and take it into a third party application or an application that I use like constantly, which happens to be Cinema 4D and Octane Render. Now, there is another tab that I didn't touch over here, and it was under the Scenes tab, and it's Objects and Details. And honestly, I never use this within my workflow. These are just additional objects like little blades of grass or other stuff that you can add in your scene you can see if i click on add layer click on add it's got its own library of trees and stuff like that and this would come in handy if you were actually going to render your image within world creator but i want to show you how to actually export this out of world creator and take it into another program right so i'm done i've showed you guys all of the different techniques to create your terrain there's so many useful tools that we can use in this program and i've actually showed you how to text uh, texture your terrains from start to finish as well so let's export this out of here you'll see that we've got this icon over here called export so there's two well there's actually different types of maps that we want to export out of here we technically cannot export this entire terrain as an obj because this is an object it's basically going to be exported out as a displacement or a height map. So you'll be creating a plane in your 3D program and then creating a material and applying that displacement map onto the plane so that you get these exact same results. So when I go to export, you'll see we have different tabs over here. I'm going to start with surface. For the map type, you can export the height map, which is going to be the displacement map, which is the most important map uh, Obviously, we're going to need that map so that we get this exact same terrain. And then you can export a normal map as well. So the format that I use all the time, here by select format, I always export out a TIFF. My normalization is on best fit. And here by bit depth, by default, it's on 8. But if you can, try and export a 32-bit map as well because that's going to give you the highest fidelity and the best quality ever for your displacement map. Now you want to make sure before you actually export this out, because we're done now, I'm not going to be covering any game engines because I don't use these maps in any game engines. I mainly use it for concept art, which you can see you can export it for Unity or Unreal Engine as well. But before we export out this map, you want to make sure you go back to base and here by precision and the resolution, make sure you've got it on a resolution that you are happy with, right? For me, 4K usually works fine most of the time especially for mid to long range shots if you want to do close-ups uh, i'd recommend maybe putting that on 8k or even 16k if you can handle it the maps are going to be quite large but you're going to get the highest quality possible but for me uh, this i'm going to leave this on 4k and once i'm ready and i'm good to go my terrain's being created my textures are applied i'm going to go to export make sure i've got all of these settings over here 32 bit and i'm going to click on export I'm going to go to my desktop over here. Let's see, I'm going to go to tutorial and I'll just name this Sandy height map and click on save. It's going to go ahead, process that and it's going to go ahead and save out the height slash displacement map for you, which is really, really important. So there we go. It's saving that out for me. And we are done. Now we want to make sure that we're exporting out the textures as well. So the next tab is textures and over here, I think by default this is on splat map now I don't honestly I don't use these other settings the only setting I use over here is the color map which is basically going to export everything as a single map so all of these textures that you've combined together the dark sand light sand are going to be compiled into a single map PNG is the format I'm going to be using and I'm going to click on export and I'm going to save it to the that exact same folder so I'll just say sandy color map click on save all right, it's going to go ahead and export that out and now just another tip uh, that you want to take note of let's say okay wait let's just let that export quickly before i jump forward because obviously i want to do everything in real time okay so let's go back to textures remember how i showed you earlier that i'm going to use the dark sand here i showed you earlier the smoothness tab if i bump this up it's going to make certain areas look a lot more glossier and that will come in handy with like wet sand or mud now let's say that you actually want this particular texture this material you applied on here to have the same effect in another 3d program right because we basically export out a color map that contains everything as a single map but i want to separate this right i want this section to actually be glossy and look like mud so while you're setting the textures area you just need to go ahead and export out a height map 
uh, sorry, a heat map. Let's go ahead, save out a heat map. I'm gonna go to my desktop tutorial, and this one I'll just name it Sandy. You wanna make sure you've got that texture selected, which is dark sand. So I'll just say Sandy heat map, and I'll just call it glossy or spec because that's what I'm going to be using in the 3D program. So go ahead, save out that heat map. And right now we are good to go. We've exported out our displacement map. We've exported out a color map that contains all of this texture information. And we've exported out a heat map. If for whatever reason there's an area on your texture that needs to have a different uh, property applied to it that's going to maybe be glossy. Or like I said, mud in this case. So we are done. And I'm going to be showing you how I'm actually importing these materials into another 3D program like Cinema 4D and Octane Render. All right, so here's the maps that we've exported. We've got that color map. You can see it contains all of that information. If I go to properties and details, you can see it's at 4K. That's the resolution that I wanted. And we've got the heat map, which is going to be used for a glossy or specular area where there's maybe mud. And this is the height map. It looks kind of strange right now because it's at 32, but you can see it's 64 megabytes. Uh, but that this map right here is super important because this is the actual displacement. This is what our terrain is supposed to look like. So I'm going to go ahead into Cinema 4D and I'm going to create something as simple as a plane. And I'm going to go to Create Shader Cinema 4D Octane and drag this onto my plane. And let's go ahead and create Glossy. Here by Diffuse, I'm going to go to Texture, go to Image Texture. And let's go ahead and select our color map. I'm going to click on no. Let's go to displacement, add displacement. I'm going to put this on 4K. I'm going to put this on follow vertex normal. And let's load in image texture. Let's go ahead and load in our height map, which is going to be our displacement map. All right, so we are good to go. If I go ahead and bring up the live viewer and start Octane, you'll see over there, you can already see our textures applied to our terrain but right now it's still quite flat and that's because under displacement we need to bump up the amount so of course we could go back into a world creator and look at our high our actual map is over here to get that height to be similar right, I'm just eyeing it right now There we go. You can see in in World Creator we were actually designing and looking at from looking at it from this angle. So now we need to add some lights in our scene. So I'm gonna add an octane daylight quickly, and let's just rotate this just this angle here. There we go. We've got our World Creator terrain in another 3D program. It's got that material applied to it as well. And now depending on how you're going to use this, maybe it's going to be an aerial shot. Maybe you're going to do a close-up shot like this. It's looking down. And right now you can see the entire material is quite glossy, right? It looks like everything is wet sand over here. And that's why we've got that other material, which is the... Yeah, there we go. You can see everything looks wet. So I'm going to go back over here and click on Specular. Texture. Let's load in an image texture. All right, and I'm going to load in that heat map in this case. And now you can see that it's just applied that glossiness to a very specific region and the rest of the sand is dry while this area is wet. So that's just one way to have selective glossiness within your scene. If you wanted everything to look dry, go ahead, delete this and just make sure your specular color over here is a lighter gray, just so it isn't super glossy. But there we go. We've got all that texture information in here. We've got our, uh, our height or our displacement applied to a simple plane at 32 bits. And since this is a plane, I can go ahead, delete this, hold on control, and just drag this out. I can duplicate my plane and start building out maybe a very vast landscape and remember if I wanted to if I wanted the same terrain with some variation within my scene I can always go back to world creator
go back to surface and scroll through the seed over here. Right, it's going to be a little bit slow because the seed has to calculate both the textures and uh, the rest of the information. But there we go. Whoa, it even created another path over here. But you can see that seed is going to give me some uh, variation or differences in the terrain. And I can export out multiple displacement maps and texture maps to build a pretty complex terrain. But this is how you would use it in another program. Pretty cool, right? And super easy to set up. So it would be good to go if you were doing some concept art. Here you go. You've got a head start. You've got your terrain in here. It's completely textured. We can play around with the lighting in our scene. And this this is the power of, of just using 3D programs in general is that we control everything. We basically like a god in these 3D programs where we can, tr we can control the time of day and <laughs> it's just a whole lot of fun but this is basically how I'm setting it up in another 3D program. I thought I'd just show you guys the initial setup if it's something you wanted to do and then from here it's completely up to you what type of scene you want to build out and where, how, how far are you going to take it on from here. Okay so one more tip if you want to add a little bit more detail, small detail or complexity to actual terrain, uh, go into World Creator and actually export out a normal map as a PNG. Then in your 3D program, uh, go ahead, yeah, I've got, and by normal I created an image texture and I just loaded in my normal map. But here by the UV transform, I actually decreased the size a little bit. So I'm using the exact same uh, information from the height map that's been converted into a normal map. And I'm layering that on top of the displacement map. You'll see if I hide the normal over here. Just unpause that. Right, so this is what it looks like without that normal map applied. And maybe that's the look and feel that you are going for. But you can see by layering the normal map on top of the displacement and then decreasing the size of it, it's adding in all of these like secondary, very tiny little details on here that just add even more complexity and detail to the terrain. But it truly depends on what you're going for. If you want to stay true to the overall look that you see within World Creator, then uh, I'd recommend maybe not adding the normal map on top, but you can add that normal map on top of the displacement uh, just to get some other interesting results and just to see what you can uh, come up with. So yeah, uh, that is going to be the basics of just setting up these materials and then it's completely up to you what you guys plan on rendering in your programs of choice.